Hi, uh, my name is uh, Vahan Davudian. I'm a physics experimentalist. For 30 years, I have already uploaded or posted seven theories in YouTube a month ago. They are as follows. Free falling objects by Vahan Davudian. Attraction, gravity by Vahan Davudian. Earth's electric field, gravity, the cause of attraction positive and negative charges, the theory of the separation of charges, Earth's rotation in Regis University with Dr. Gray, new concept in DC motor by Vahan Davutian. Well, of course, this last one is an invention. I have to explain a little bit more. And today I am going to talk about radio meter. This is amazing device. It looks like a toy, but it has a lot of science. And uh, this has a quite a history. His name was uh, William Crookes. He was a fantastic chemist, English chemist and scientist. And uh, he was experimenting in his lab in 1800 with thallium, which is an element. And then, in fact, uh, he was genius. He invented the cathode ray tubes and those, you know, all those tubes you can do partial vacuum or vacuum and uh, deflect beam of electrons back and forth. And then, while he was experimenting with thallium, he discovered something strange. Thallium is an element, anyway, and then. He had to thermodynamically close everything so the wind current and the other things won't affect the, uh, you know, the result because he was extremely meticulous, meticulous person like Henry Cavendish. He was great experimentalist. So in order to do that, he had to put the thallium in the partial vacuum tubes, cathode ray tubes, and then he was thinking everything is thermodynamically uh, closed and then he won't have any outside influence. After a few minutes, sunshine strike the thallium and something strange happened. The acceleration to the gravity, God knows milligram or microgram, was less. And he had no idea what happened. And then when he blocked the sun, Sunshine, he realized everything was okay. And this was amazing inspiration for William Crook. Uh, so he decided to do this. And then this has also history. Well, it's a simple device. It's like a ball, but it's never going to be, it's going to be partial vacuum, not 100% vacuum, because it's not going to work. The reason why, it has four vans. Two vans are I mean, uh, four vans, one side is black and the other side is white. Well, as you know, the black is a black body radiation. They absorb all the electromagnetic waves from the sunshine, from this light bulb, from everyone, even from my hand. And then what happened, they absorb everything. And then there is a little bit current of the molecules, which is heated by these vans. But unfortunately, there was no explanation whatsoever what happened to the white hands. Because in these 30 years I was doing my experiment, I'm always in the habit of replicating Galileo's, Niels Bohr, Wolfgang Pauli, Werner Heisenberg, or whoever does those experiments. I like to do this experiment as much as I can, if it's not beyond my expertise. And then I realized something important was missing. Now, William Crook missed that, and I have never seen in any books whatsoever. This has never been mentioned. The white is amazing. Well, of course, it's not white, it's shiny, they call it. When the light, electromagnetic light, strike to it, momentum is 200%. And I wasn't sure, I had to investigate for the propulsion lab, jet propulsion lab in uh, LA. Then I realized there's a, a you know, device called the solar sail. Well, of course, it's not very, I mean, powerful, but you know, it's a concept that if you have a huge, huge 
shit, God knows, maybe uh, 200, 300 meter square meter, and then sun hits to it, it's going to be action reaction. The sun's electromagnetic wave, if they hit that in a 90 degree, it's going to be 100 percent, then another 100 percent, 200 percent momentum, and then that will propel that solar cell forever. Well, of course, the problem is with the solar cell, and always we have to escape gravity in, a, you know, any planet like Earth or Mars, or I mean, escaping that uh, escape, uh, escape, you know, escaping from that gravity is a huge challenge. But solar cell is rather symbolic. It's not going to be real useful because another problem with the solar cell is after the Mars. Sun's electromagnetic waves is not powerful enough. They won't be able to recharge the batteries, you know, to give them more energy. But you see our space station, how close it is. We don't need that problem. I mean, we always get charged everything from the sun. But when you get beyond Mars, it's going to be a problem. Well, anyway, and then I discovered that. And then I did so many experiments. I'm going to show you now. One thing strange happened, when I am holding when I'm holding the incandescent, it must be exactly 90 degrees to the vans. See? 90 degrees to the vans. But see, this is not bad. This is going like 100, 120 RPM, but if I get it to sunshine, it's going to go 250 RPMs. And then I realized when I take them like this, it is not good enough. You see, the reason why light electromagnetic waves are not acting like a right angle. They are not doing 90 degrees with the fans. You see how slow it is? See? But when I get it like this, how fast they go? Look. Now I'm going to demonstrate with a discharge lamp. Well, unfortunately, this has not been around. This is 10 years old, this discharge lamp. And uh, it was so good when they came out. I remember 20 years ago in Denver. And then when we bought this, it was so good. Now you can hardly find any. So the reason why I bought this, it was for my experiment. These are so different because everything in the tubes or spirals, they're ionized. So practically, they don't have filament. Anything has a filament like this, you know, light, they are so powerful. They will activate this no matter what. But these ones are ionized, and look, when I hold this, it is not activating at all. And then I discovered this. So the reason why, if you go back to the Max plan, photon energy, it says Max plan times the frequency. Well, of course, that's a constant, that's a huge number. We don't want to do that now, mention that. So, see, it's not activating at all. And it doesn't matter when do I hold this, the discharge is not going to do anything. But the incandescent, does. Let me show you. See, this is incandescent. It's not a real good one, it's, it's a small ball, but you know it does, it does the work. Let me get another one, because this is not powerful enough. See if this is better.
see how good it goes. But when I go on top like that, which is not 90 degrees with the vents, see how slow that goes? Because the photon energy is almost none, see? It stopped, see? But if I go a little bit angle, it starts. But the angle must be always 90 degrees. In fact, this is so important. In Henrik Lorenz, they call it Henrik Lorenz, must be 90 degrees. And then Michael Faraday did on his induction. If you have two coils, they're not 90 degrees, they are parallel, it's going to be good. You know, they must have real close together in order to get the induction. Even on, you know, moon and earth and sun, when we have the spring tide, that is amazing. The same thing happened. So imagine you can replace this with the moon and the sun, and then if they're all in one line, that tide is going to be amazing. That is the biggest tide ever. But when they are not in one line, sun, moon, and earth, they're not aligned in one line, it's called nip. That is not enough, that is not very powerful tide. But when it's the big tide happened, you know, moon is pulling a lot on oceans, a lot. Anyway, I did some experiment with the uh, with the prairie dogs because I used to live in Denver for 20 years and I show you an amazing thing. In Denver we have thousands and thousands and thousands of prairie dogs. So the reason why I'm bringing this up, I just wanted to show you how the sun's electromagnetic waves are affecting everything. And then where I used to live in Westminster, Colorado, there was a ballast like that. It was almost like a 20 centimeter high. You see, it's almost like a cone and the prairie dogs are amazing animals. They go 15 meters below the, the you know, ground and they are extremely smart. They have a chamber here and that chamber is not going to get flooded because it has another thing. It discharges the water, extra water. I mean, amazing, this little animal is so intelligent anyway. And they never get caught because they're always standing by. And this day was the great day, like what Munestan said, uh, in my whole life. It was five degrees in Denver, Colorado. I went to check the prairie dogs. I saw something strange. You see, it snowed a lot. It was five degrees only. And then a few days later, I checked and realized this part, which was, you know, perpendicular to the <laughs> sun's electromagnetic wave, is melted completely and this part not even one millimeter was melt it was exactly like that I said wow it's five degrees that degree temperature has nothing to do this is sun's electromagnetic jostling that is causing that you know to melt so uh, these prairie dogs I mean this is amazing how they live and then I checked it later, and then I realized it always happened. Always happened. Whenever the sun is at the right angle, and then you can see how good it is. You know, summertime is so hot because, you know, the angle is different. But winter is so different. When the sun is set, it's, it's entirely different. And today also, I want to demonstrate uh, Sir Isaac Newton's Sir Isaac Newton's cradle. This is amazing device, and then I realized, uh, like I said, I used to do all this experiment by myself, and in fact, most of the time I came up with so many things that it was not discovered. 
In fact, this was not discovered but, uh, with Sir Isaac Newton. It was a French guy. Don't remember his name anyway. But this amazing device. Look, see. If I pull this. Well, of course, this is not a professional one. The professional ones goes to like 80 seconds, almost 70 seconds. This goes to 60. The reason why I couldn't find it larger one, these are for, uh, no, these are uh, 32 grams, yeah, I'm sorry. I said to myself, well, something is missing about this. So when this hits the other one, and then the momentum is, goes back and forth, even if I go two, it's going to be two, even if I go three, it's going to be three. But see, because I worked with lots of physics for 30 years, I have a good experience. I said I better get help from my best buddy, Galileo. And then what happened? He was an amazing scientist. Sir Isaac Newton, in fact, followed his work and then a stage was set for Sir Isaac Newton because Galileo was the only person after 2,000 years Aristotle said, you know, so many things. He was so disagreeing, and then that was a bad environment at that time. And Mr. Bruno was killed because he was talking about the earth and so and so. But Galileo got so lucky they didn't kill him. They just put him in his own house. He was in jail. And one time he went to the church, and then he realized that, you know, one of those monks are eating this the uh, uh, chandeliers, and he let the chandelier go. But see how some people are so observant. I would say probably millions of millions of people have attended those mass in those Italy, in Pisa, and nobody noticed why the chandelier is going back and forth and back and forth. But, but this guy just was uh, genius. I mean, he was in medical school. He said, heck, I'm going to go ahead and quit the medical school. Two years he was in medical school. I mean, how could someone be so intelligent beyond our imagination? There was no clock. It would take another 200 years. Christian Newton would come, and uh, Emily de Chatelet would come, get the pendulum, and so on and so on. The clock was not even invented at that time. So this guy was genius, he put his pulse, and then he took everything home, and then he tried to measure it how much water he gets. And then he realized the balls are not rolling in the ramp in the same acceleration. And then later I found out, I discussed it in Caltech with so many, you know, Physicists just love these ideas. I said, you know, unfortunately, gravity doesn't do anything. The reason why those balls are rolling all the way to 40, 50, 60, 70 meters so fast is because of gained kinetic energy. K is half mass times the velocity squared. Well, of course, I show you. And I said I better get help from Mr. Galileo. So what I did, his ramp was uh, uh, like uh, one ramp. It was just, you know, one ramp. I have no idea, was it four meters, three meters? But it was ramp, and he was so genius, he put some bells. So one bell would indicate, you know, acceleration due to gravity. Uh, one notch and two notch at that time he was there was no clock anyway i said i have to do the same thing but you see how fast they go there is no way that the human's perception will tell you how this works but i came up with a genius idea i had to bend my ramp it was exactly like galileo's ramp but huge, it's two meters, there's one on each side. So I had to bend from the center like a V-shape, I'll show you. If I don't bend it, so I won't be able to roll those balls. So what I did, I'll show you in a minute. 
I realized the main thing, the reason why this is getting so good and is so much momentum and is conserved because of resistance. And then I did a special experiment. I had one ball in my ramp like this. I rolled another ramp, I'll show you in a minute. It went, it accelerated 32 centimeters. And then I had to add another one. And this was extra mass. It could have been less, but on the contrary, it was more. And then when I rolled this, this was causing resistance. And this one accelerated 16% more. So it looks like uh, this is a new law in a motion. Anytime you get, I mean, resistant in something, everything, you know, multiplies. So I show you, let me remove this from here so I can show you the ramp. So see, this is the ramp, but let me see, I have to adjust a little bit so you can see the balls, the way they roll back and forth. I have to adjust it a little bit so you can see much better. You see, now you can see. So, I've got exactly five balls, they're exactly the same size and same mass. Well, see, this is a special plastic, it's extremely sharp, even less than a millimeter. It's so sharp, and then the acceleration is so good. Look, see, I showed you. See what happened? This is called elastic collision. So, with time, you have gravitational potential energy here, and then you have maximum kinetic energy here. And then again, back and forth and back and forth is just converting gravitational potential energy to kinetic energy, and kinetic energy to gravitational potential energy. But see, I show you. So see, it goes to 32, but now, if I add one more, this is the resistance, see? And then if I roll another one, see? Even 16% more. And then I also realized, when I have more, it doesn't make any difference at all. Look, see? You see how easy it is to understand. There is no way that you can understand how the cradle moves, but this one is so easy. Look, see? If I do like a cradle, look, see? If I release two, see what happens. Did you see? It's exactly like, even if I release three, it's going to be three. Well, of course, I don't want to do six anyway, see? Well, as a matter of fact, I had to find the finest, the best steel balls available, brand new ones, never been used, because one milligram makes a big difference. These masses are so good. I have an electronic uh, uh, a scale, extremely powerful, sensitive, and it measures everything. Well, of course, for the other ones, hopefully, I'm hoping next week, I will try to do the general relativity that's going to be maybe more than two hours and that's going to be like five, five sections and then I will reveal so many, so many hidden things for Albert Einstein which was never been told or never been written in the books 
and then all this 30 years experiment in my in physics, electronic, so I will bring it back to you guys and uh, I'm hoping that from now on um, everything will be okay and then every week, like I said, I have more than 20 theories, every week I will publish one and put it on YouTube, but the important thing is I want you to, your feedback is so important, you know, in science, nothing is oscillating without the feedback. You know, one important circuit in science was um, tank circuit, and that is amazing. It's a charging, discharging, charging, discharging through the cap you know, capacitor, conductor, and it's amazing, can send the electromagnetic waves in space forever. And even if you have a transistor, it can go on and off, on and off, you know. Always I need your feedback, and then I want you uh, to see if you like those things. With you, my email is this, vahantdavutyan.al.com. You can email me. I live in Dallas, Texas. And then I'm always here to help you guys. Well, of course, uh, there's some scientist I like to mention. His name is uh, Dr. Michio Kaku. He's an amazing person. He is my favorite scientist, Dr. Michio Kaku, and uh, he wrote a book about uh, teleportation. Well, of course, uh, you know, he, he's, uh, he was comparing with the entanglement, which was proposed a uh, long time ago. And entanglement means that, you know, if you have a one particle here and one particle here, you do whatever to this particle, the other one is going to be true. And I just wanted to let know, Mr. Michio Kako, you are my favorite uh, scientist. I love your ideas and I would like to meet you. And then I have a good news for you. Uh, when I was seven years old, I remember you said eight years old you were doing some. I said I was seven years old. I read very scary, very bad, bad, bad book. And then I realized there is a man on one side and he'll be teleported to the other side so people can see him in China or the other countries. And you know, I was only seven years old. I had no idea what happened. And then when I came to the United States, I said, hey, Mr. Michio Kaku, your dream came true. This is called partial teleportation. And I was FaceTiming my friend in Australia. I realized, hey, I can see him. But you know what? Mr. Michio Kako said he is hoping in another 10 years we will be able to do the teleportation. I'm 70 years old. When I see these things, I know that the science is not there yet. When I was a baby, I used to read Schul World books. We will go to the planets and so and so. And finally it came through. Albert Einstein died before he even went to the space. 1955 he died. So his insight was amazing. He predicted way before his death. So what Mr. Schulwer said, we will go to the planets. I remember I was 13 years old, and then Yuri Gagarin went to space. I came home. I was so excited. I could not sleep. And that was the best day of my life, 13 years old. And somebody was in the space like 100 minutes. That was a great moment in my life. So there's few of scientists on YouTube, and uh, you know they do a special experiment like me. And one of them is Dr. Nick Lucid. He's great physicist. I mean his explanation is beyond my imagination. He's so precise, so concise and coherent. And there, there's another one. His name is Dr. Derek Miller. He does a special experiment exactly like me. And then there's another one, his, call name is, his name is uh, Dr. Arvin Ash. He also does good experiment. And you know, I was wondering, uh, this is my email, vahandavudyan.com. Anytime I'd, I'd like to get with you guys and then exchange views, because my objective is not to force people to subscribe for me. My objective is 
to work for science, my objective is to promote the science. So I'm hoping Dr. Nick Lucid and Dr. Eric uh, Mueller and Mr. Arvin Ash and Dr. Mitchell Kako will respond to my request and then if they, if they have plenty of time, they can get in touch with me, we can exchange views because like I said, I have 20 more experiments and uh, most of the time, my experiments, I mean my inspiration came from nature, from the insects and animals. And one of them which was so shocking in my life was in Denver, Colorado. And I remember it was 2005, I was standing on the Platte River in Denver. It's a huge river. And then I was looking down the uh, bridge, I saw something strange. The water was a little bit stagnant there, and then I realized, I said, hey, this is great inspiration for the one. This water can be considered like full of electrons. And then from my perspective, those, you know, wood chips and then the leaves and things were uh, going clockwise. And from my left side, they were going counterclockwise. I said, one, well, the mystery is solved. The thing you were working for so many years, the theory of separation of charges, that's what happened because the charges are getting separated. Well, of course, this you know, became a huge obsession all my life because I knew that the Andra Ampert did two wires in the same direction, they attract each other. There was no logical explanation whatsoever why they attract each other and why they don't. And then when I went to this flat river, I realized that, hey, Fahan, you can do that. That's exactly what happened. You can replace the river water with the electrons in the copper wire, and then those chips are going to, to the right side, clockwise and counterclockwise, can be your south and north. That's exactly what happened. And then, I realized I was the only one I could say why we have north and south. And 10 years ago, 15 years ago, I insisted so many times in my theories, if something can work in a one millimeter wire, can work in a 12,000 kilometer earth. It's exactly the same. It's due to the orientation of the dipoles. I'm not talking about quintillion, more than quintillion, quintillion, and they have no place to go, and finally they have the charges. And the humans are amazing. Everything, and then I said to myself, Vahan, you have to prove it's not a space at time. Gravity is electrostatic charges. Gravity is electromagnetic charges. Well, of course, I will explain it next week in my theories. So I'm hoping uh, it's going to be so comprehensive that general relativity, and then I will post it. And uh, I thank you for your time. And then, like I said, always I honor your feedback because the feedback is so good. And I don't want to commercialize things, you know. If you thump up or thump down, it's good. No. What is your feedback? What is your understanding? Did you have any problem with that? And on top, any university, any colleges, any final, any institution, you know, science institution, if they want, I'd be happy to travel to their town with my money, set up everything, do all this weird experiment for you guys, and hopefully, as much as I can, I can explain it to you guys. Thank you very much, and have a good day.